agriculture has undergone its biggest mutation since prehistory with the help of machines, fertilizers, and pesticides. The demand is for ever more food, ever faster production, and ever lower costs. But we cannot go on indefinitely increasing yields without harming the resources which are already overexploited. In New York, Dixon de Pommier, professor of environmental sciences at the Columbia University, has spent the last 20 years trying to bring the world out of the impasse in which it is caught up. There are many people who would suggest very strongly that uh, things can go on as normal. So it depends on how you define normal. Normal in this case is not good normal, it's bad normal. We were going to run out of resources <laughs> eventually. And when we run out of resources, we have collapse as the result. So cities become extinct. It could happen to Paris, to London, to New York City, to Chicago. If you become too large to um, supply enough to keep everybody happy, then you will get a collapse of the system. Something needs to change in our planet's food system. Every second around the world, 40 tons of food are discarded. That is one-third of global agricultural production that rots every year during transportation. From New York to Shanghai, people are coming to the same conclusion. The problem is no longer producing more, but producing better. In reality, Global agricultural production is greater than consumption. So why are there so many people who still aren't getting enough to eat? There are two reasons. The first is that agricultural resources aren't balanced. In some places, too much food is being produced. And in others, there's not enough to go around. So there are still many populations suffering from famine around the world. The second reason is waste. In a country as big as China, the amount of food being wasted is huge. How can we reduce this phenomenon and rebalance global production? Urban agriculture is a strategic solution to these two problems. People became disconnected from the natural world. Today, we realize those disconnects, and we can see what it causes. It causes problems of transporting the food supply to the city. It pollutes the air, it pollutes the water, it pollutes the land. And we now have a movement afoot, I think, a very strong movement in most cities, not in everybody, but in, in a large group in, mo in most cities, to, to move agriculture back into the city, to put the food supply close to where people live, to allow them to reconnect with the processes which allowed you to develop to begin with. All around the world, when cities and countryside come together, it makes for a show. And the audience provides the proof. We want to bring food production as close as possible to where food is eaten. But creating fields amidst concrete spaces isn't as easy as all that. Where can we find the room to grow fruit, vegetables, and grains? Do we need to redesign our boulevards to make way for tractors? Fortunately for local residents, there are some alternatives. In Montreal, the Lufa farm is located on a roof just 10 minutes from downtown. It proves that it is possible to be both local and profitable. The idea was to build a farm that would be truly close to the consumers in the center of the city and which would allow us to harvest food for eating that same day. We are very proud that the majority of our vegetables travel fewer than eight miles to consumers' plates. The harvest starts at 5 a.m., and only vegetables needed that day are picked. It's a way of reducing food waste to almost zero. The food chain is normally very long. Our food often has to travel huge distances to reach us. Tomatoes, for example, take weeks, either in cargo ships, trains, or depots, before reaching your plate. So ripening happens on the way. And that is a big difference with the varieties you find here in the greenhouse, compared to what you find on grocer's shelves. Products selected for their quality 
not for their capacity to stand up to transportation or being able to travel sometimes thousands of miles. Our vegetables are picked each morning, which means they're harvested when ripe, when their sugar content is highest and their taste is at its best. The Lufa farm opened in 2011 and is far from being an isolated initiative. Around big cities, local producers are getting organized and coming direct to urban consumers. The, the appetite for fresh produce is, is growing tremendously, not just in New York City, but all across uh, North America and in, in the EU as well. And local food is growing in popularity as well because consumers, they're concerned about knowing where the food is produced and how it's produced. New York has been a real innovator in rooftop farming and uh, we have lots of different examples of different types of rooftop farms, open air farms, uh, greenhouses on rooftops. And it's partly because we have entrepreneurs who have gotten excited by the idea. Uh, we also have about 3,000 acres of flat rooftop space on buildings that can actually hold the weight of a farm. Spearheading this global trend, the former industrial neighborhood of Brooklyn in New York is rapidly becoming the biggest urban vegetable garden on the planet. The irony is that in the 19th century, Brooklyn was a market garden area at the gates to the city. A few years after agriculture was driven out by industry, it is returning via the rooftops. The proponents of urban agriculture propose a low-cost, green, sustainable, and convivial city. But rooftop cultivation will never be able to respond to the immense food requirements of tomorrow's cities. <laughs> rooftop farms are a great uh, first step for vertical farming. They are urban agriculture, and they solve one of the large problems, which is locality. Rooftop farms take traditional agriculture and place it on the roof in the city. So the distance problem has been solved, but the multiplication and the large-scale crop production needs to be the next step, and that is where the vertical farm comes in. Passing to the next level is all well and good, but how? Nobody dared imagine cities capable of producing enough to feed the seven billion city dwellers of the year 2050. Nobody, that is, until Dixon de Pommier got hold of the idea. So the idea was to grow food on rooftops first and move it into the building. What I did to begin with was uh, use a classroom as the way of introducing a new idea. And you know, the students, and I didn't have many students, but they all said, you can do that? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> you know, how would I know? I've never done that before, but, but it's, it's interesting to imagine doing it. In the quiet of his classroom, Dixon de Pommier is now offering his students a radical and fascinating hypothesis on the scale of tomorrow's megacities, towers capable of feeding 30,000 people for an entire year. If you take a farm that's horizontal and make it into a large apartment like for plants, I call that vertical farming. For one acre of indoor farm, it's equivalent to 10 acres of outdoor farm. So you've compressed and uh, maximized efficiency by growing things in closed spaces within these tall structures. Today we use the size of South America to grow food for 7.2 billion people. We can accomplish the same thing with one-tenth the use of land if we were to farm inside the city. One-tenth. <laughs> 